Hello and welcome to this art workshop provided by Arts for All Nevada and Washoe County School District. Today we're going to explore the idea of textures and we're going to collect them by using different rubbings and put them in together to create our own version of a snail. It may be quite abstract or it may be quite realistic, you can decide what you want to do. So what you'll need is a brown paper bag, um, some white paper and I'm just using white printer paper which I've cut in half, uh, a glue stick, maybe some white stickers or you can use your white paper if you want to use that for the eyes, scissors, pencil, wax crayons which you will have to peel some of the paper off so that we can do the rubbings and I have got some textures here or you may want to use textures that you can find around your house but we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get going. So let's just move all this to the side so that I can show you the artist that we're going to look at today and you can see the picture that we're going to do. It's a little bit bigger than the other things we've been doing. So the artist we're going to look at is an artist called Henri Matisse. He is a French artist. He was born in 1869 to uh, quite a well-off family and he started off his career as uh, studying law um, but when he was 22 he um, was confined to his bed for an illness and his mother bought him some paints and after that time he decided he wanted to be an artist. Um, he um, tried to go into an art academy in Paris but was very unsuccessful, eventually managed to get in. But his paintings were quite uh, traditional at that point until he bought a painting by um, Cezanne in 1900. And then his work suddenly changed. It became a lot brighter, a lot more experimental. And he founded the Fauves, which is, um, meant wild beasts, with two other artists um, in 1905. He became very popular because his work was really bright and decorative and fun and it showed the world around him. But in 1914, he ended up being confined, sorry, 1941, he ended up being confined to um, his bed and a wheelchair um, and he wasn't able to paint anymore. So what he ended up doing was doing using the technique of collage to create some really different pieces. Some were smaller, but a lot of them were mural side, and that means they were almost as big as walls, and they were made of cut pieces of paper. He called it painting with scissors. And this is an example of one of his pieces. It's called The Snail, which was done in 1953. And you have to look quite closely. It's quite abstract. You can't automatically see the snail. But he did lots and lots of drawings off snails before he started this and he really liked the idea of the spiral of the snail that come coming out from the center and if you look very closely you have actually got a spiral coming out which represents the snail so this piece is pretty abstract you have to look very closely maybe even look at the title so you know what you're looking at um, but I like the idea of using these really bright colors completely different from the original and coming up with your own idea of it, your own inspiration from it. And that's what we're going to use today. We are actually going to use the idea of the snail and this was just to show you a completely different way of looking at it. So this is a book called Snail Brings the Mail and you know we're going the other way. This is a cartoon character of what a snail looks like. And in their own way, the artist has done their own sort of version of it. This is something we recognize a little bit more, but it's the same sort of thing, taking something that's very familiar to us and making it a little bit more your own. So snail brings the mail. Hooray for snail, he brings the mail. Day in, day out, he will not fail. A box for fox and three for bee. Oh wow, says Al, 10 cards for me. You missed the party in my tree, so I see. From dusk, from dawn to dusk, snail goes on. He does work hard, but he's so slow. His friends might have to wait all day. Poor snail, he does his best, they say. 
One morning, things go wrong for Snail. He wakes up late, he drops the mail. It starts to rain, it starts to hail. Snail won't give up, I must not fail. The cold wind blows, it's quite a gale. The sky turns dark, the snail turns pale. The road is flooded, bad luck snail. He can't get through, snail wells, I failed. But look, a tractor up for sale. The deal is done, now watch snail go. He won't get stuck in rain or snow. These days the mail is right on time and snail gets through, come rain or shine. And here's our snail. So you can see the, the illustrator has just made it down to really simple shapes. He's got the spiral of the shell just like Matisse had and we'll have that sort of same ideas on ours but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. So the words we're going to use today are texture, abstract and rubbing. I'm just going to move this to the side so you've got a bit more room to see. So texture talks about what something feels like, whether it's smooth or bumpy or prickly or furry. So you can show that within your drawing. So maybe we're going to do some lines to maybe make something look furry or prickly or maybe we're going to use some lines to make it look bumpy there's lots of different ways you can actually show a texture but some artists also actually put texture on their work this one is a little notepad and they've actually stuck feathers and different pieces of paper on it they've also used their paint a lot thicker so the surface actually has a raised surface to it. It's even got thread on it. So you can actually put texture on your painting or your work to make it actually have um, some different uh, change of surface. Abstract is when things are drawn so they don't necessarily look like they look like something you would recognise. Now these are just some examples from one of my art books that I've got. And you can see... There's a whole range of different abstracts. Some of them look as if they might show something and some of them are just a study of colours or dark and light shapes. So it can be a whole range of different things. Ours is going to be a little bit abstract and maybe you'll be able to recognise the snail in it. Rubbins talks about another way that we can record a texture as well as actually drawing it or actually putting it on. A rubbing shows you're going to put something under the paper and you're going to use a crayon a wax crayon which has um, been peeled from the paper so you can use the side of it and that's actually quite important you don't want to fill in the gaps by using it like a pencil so you're going to lay it down on the paper flat and you are going to rub through pressing down as hard as you can just using the side of it and the texture will come through so depending what you put underneath you'll get different marks on the top and we can play around with different colors to do that so those are the words that we're going to use today we're going to start by doing our textures and we're going to use our wax crayons and we're going to use our colors our primary and our secondary colors that we've used before now you might like to go around your house and use things like the walls or the floors and do a rubbing from that. I've actually gone around and I've found some different things. So I've got a piece, a couple of pieces of different sandpaper that got different textures. This was some packaging. Packaging is always quite good. We've got these little circle shapes in it. This was a mat. This is another piece of map. We've got some different cardboard and I actually found some wood. So you can have a look around and see what else you can find. You're going to need about six of them, I think. So all you're going to do is you're going to put them down and then put the paper on top. And you're going to use the wax crayons. But what you need to do is to strip. If you don't want to strip the whole thing, at least a part of it. So you can leave that flat on the paper and just work over the top 
You need to hold the paper in one place so it doesn't move too much. And press nice and hard and cover the whole thing. So there's my one. I'm going to do one of each of the different colours here. So I've done my purple, which was my secondary colour. I've got an orange here, which is my secondary colour. That one worked out well. I like those big, strong shapes that we've got there. Let's have my green, which is my next second, my last secondary colour. If it moves a bit, you might get some different shapes, like a, a shadow shape. It's okay. You decide if you want to do that. And then I'm going to go to my primary. So this one's actually lost some, so I'm actually going to take a little bit more of my paper off so that I can see. And then we'll use this one again. And if it's not very big, I've just moved the paper over so that I can get it all covered. So there's my blue. You might need to go on a little bit of hunt, see if you can get some different ones. If you're going to use the wall or the floor, make sure you've got someone there maybe to help you so that you don't actually draw on the floor or the wall. And I'm going to use my last secondary colour, uh, my last primary colour. Let's peel a bit more of this off. There we go. If you find it helps you can even maybe use a little bit of masking tape to hold things in place. So you're going to have six different colours showing six different textures and then what you're going to do is you're just going to tear them and I prefer to tear them because we're going to make them into sort of squarish shapes. doesn't have to be perfect but it makes the edges a little bit more interesting than cutting them. You could tear them all the same time to make them the same size and same shape. Make them pretty big. You can see I'm probably using about half of this piece of paper to make it the sort of size that I want. Don't be frightened, if it goes off into a different shape and it's not square, don't worry about it. Sometimes you've got to just accept the sort of things that happen. They may think they're a mistake but they end up being a really interesting part of your work. And you'll always find that the paper will turn what tear one way a little bit better than the other way, and it's all to do with the way that the paper's made and the fibres tear out. So you can see they're sort of about the size of my hand. They're not too far off that, but it's about a quarter of the size of the paper. So I've got six of those. I haven't used the black but I am going to use the black for the actual snail and then we need to make our big piece of paper that we're going to use so as I said I'm just using a paper bag the best thing to do is just to start by tearing off the handles there's usually a seam I've highlighted it in black so you're going to cut along the seam and then all the way around oh, I've got a receipt inside there all the way around the bottom it's a little bit fiddly but again this doesn't need to be perfectly straight you can straighten it up at the end and you'll open it up and you'll get a nice big piece of paper
you'll probably need about half of this. I'm just going to cut it in the middle. There we go. And then we've got our piece that we're going to use. So I will show you the snail at the bottom. So you can, do, you can draw it freehand or I found the biggest plate I could in my house. And I'm just going to sort of draw around it about halfway just to give me a good idea of the size of it. And I'm going to do it in pencil first. So you decide, is it going to have a head this way? I'm just going to make it almost like a boomerang shape. And I'm going to outline that. with my dark black wax crayon. And then what we're gonna do, because we're working on textures, I'm gonna give a texture to this. So I'm gonna put my shape for my snail over the top, use the end, and just press through again. It's quite a big shape. So you're probably gonna have to move it. And then we're going to do the shell of our piece. So we're going to use the idea of Matisse. Now, because we've used primary colours and secondary colours, I like to show the order of them. So I'm going to use my yellow, my orange, my red. And you can see I'm sort of going round in a spiral here. I'm just planning out just to make sure it all fits first, which I think it will. And you sort of can move it into place. But we get the idea of our spiral of our shell. And then just use your glue stick. Remember, go around the edges. And start sticking it on. Remember, these glue sticks go very very quickly so don't pull it up too much just do you do it enough to give you an edge to use work your way around they're overlapping slightly so the order I've done is I've started with one of my primary colors and my primary colour I started with yellow. So to make um, our orange, I use yellow and red. So the orange goes in the middle. Then I've got red, which is my next primary colour. So red and blue mixed together make purple. So that's why that's in the middle. And then blue and yellow mixed together make green. So that's the order that I've done. So you've actually made a colour wheel from your rubbings and your different colours that you've got there. So when you've done that, you can give him a little bit more features so that we know what he is and what he looks like. So I've just used the black crayon to put some features in. Maybe he's going to have just one eye or maybe we're going to give him two eyes. I've used stickers. If you don't have stickers, you can just cut out white paper and glue it on. And then I'm actually going to add in some eyes there. It's up to you. You could take it further. You could see if you could find some rubbing to actually give him a base or do some of the background to it. Or maybe you want to add in something to show the swirl there. Maybe you're actually going to put on some rope or something and show me the swirl coming out. You decide where you want to take it from there. If you've done that, what you might want to do is do another sort of collection of textures. So all I've done is I've gone around the house and I found different things that have different feels to them. So I've got some duct tape, some foil, this is some packaging, some more um, this dots that I had before. I found some fabric with some squares on it. This is a little bit of leather there. And I've stuck them onto a piece of card. 
I also started going outside and finding some twigs and some rocks. So you've got different ways you could do it. You could find, do some more textures and do a, a board with the textures you find. Maybe you want to go outside and actually collect some textures from outside. So it's a board just showing outside textures. Um, or maybe you want to try and draw some different textures. There's lots of things you can do, um, different ways to um, put them down on a board. And while you're doing that, think about different words you can describe to use those textures, whether they're bumpy or smooth or rough or prickly. All right, have fun collecting and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.